Hello, I'm sorry I couldn't be with you all today for the 2023 Eastern Spotted Skunk Cooperative Study Group meeting, um, but I wanted to present a little bit about our research in North Carolina. So I'm David Jahowski at Clemson University, and we've been studying spotted skunks in the state of North Carolina since 2016, and we take a lot of pride in saying we're with, we think we're one of the longest running spotted skunk research projects. We've published papers in the past couple of years on spotted skunk survival, disease, We've tracked uh, the litter of a spotted skunk from birth to independence. We documented some interesting den sharing with weasels in a field note. And we have several papers that are in the pipeline um, related to camera comparisons with baited and unbaited sets, den selection. And what I want to talk a little bit about today is our, some of our carnivore community dynamics research. So we've been running a dedicated trail camera array through the winter months in Western North Carolina for since 2016 and we have them on a cycle where we visit these sites every three years that are baited with sardines um, and we've for the recent paper we focused on the 2017 to 2020 data from 199 camera traps that had about 1.1 million photos you can see uh, on the map here roughly the distribution of where we've been sampling um, spotted skunks on an elevational gradient with a focus towards those high middle elevations and the, the quick result is that we found occupancy varied and was generally increased where they had more cover and more rugged terrain, which is similar to other studies for Eastern spotted skunks in the Appalachian Mountains. Not very surprising that on its own, but what I think is really unique about our study is how we used all of the data, not just the spotted skunk data, to try to look at factors influencing the occupancy of the entire carnivore guild in the mountains of North Carolina. And we also accounted for data where we had capture rates of on the photo, on photos of deer, rodents, and rabbits. And we were really, really looking at four hypothesized drivers of carnivore community dynamics in this system. So spotted skunks, but also all the other carnivores and how interspecific competition, habitat heterogeneity, food availability, and anthropogenic disturbance influence those. And on this screen, I have a, some details about how we actually measured those with our analyses. I won't get into the details of how structural equation modeling used occupancy, um, but I wanted to just highlight some of the results in our brief time here. So we looked at all of these potential pathways for interactions. The colors of the arrows represent positive for black and negative directions of pathways. And then dotted lines are uh, marginally significant and solid lines are significant at the 0.05 p-value level. The big takeaway here is that these mesocarnivores have lots of connections, particularly spotted skunks down here are influenced by rabbit availability, the presence of striped skunks, habitat complexity and vegetation density, road development, ruggedness of mountains. And you look at some of our larger carnivores like, like uh, black bears and coyotes, and there aren't as many connections. So the takeaways from our project in this paper was just accepted for publication in Journal of Animal Ecology, the citation down below, is that spotted skunks have a lot more connections and respond to the ecosystem than other carnivores in our system. And they're sensitive and likely excellent indicators of ecosystem level change. And I think this is interesting and important right now because we're seeing similar results from other spotted skunk studies across their range. So the island spotted skunks off the coast of California it's been really interestingly documented that island fox and island spotted skunks are tightly linked. And so when the decline of island foxes occurred in the early 1990s and through the 2000s, um, we saw a peak in spotted skunks, but now spotted skunks are actually quite rare on the island and there's concern about them. And Marie Tosa and colleagues out in Oregon found some interesting relationships related to diet. And she stated that Western spotted skunks occupy a key position in those food webs, and they serve as a hub species that creates high connectivity across arboreal, terrestrial, and aquatic systems. So we're learning a lot about how important and connected spotted skunks are to the environment, which makes them really great indicators potentially. So I won't take any more of your time today. I just wanted to highlight some of those interesting findings we have forthcoming. Um, this is a really large group of collaborators that have helped us run this camera array and a variety of other spotted skunk research, some of which are highlighted here, but particularly I want to acknowledge Colleen Offenbottle with North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission and Stephen Harris here at Clemson University.